Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. And on this uh, television program today, before we get to our guests and talk about school food, um, let's thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the participation and support of the Division for the Blind of Vermont and the Association for the Blind of Vermont, and many, many, many others. We would like to welcome... Um, Teddy, and you have to pronounce your last name, please. Wazazak. Teddy, Tezzy, Teddy Wazazak of Hungry Free Vermont uh, is here to talk about um, school nutrition and the importance of it. Welcome to Able Then On Air. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about it today. Okay. So explain the missions and goals of your agency and what you do um, to give uh, children and young adults uh, better nutrition in schools. Absolutely, so Hunger Free Vermont is an anti-hunger and anti-poverty organization. Uh, so we work to do two main things. We advocate for changes that we think that need to be made to uh, federal and state programs. Uh, and we provide assistance to individuals, organizations, schools, uh, to access federal and state programs. Uh, and get, so we will help uh, apply for grants, we will help you with technical assistance, with filling out all of the very complicated federal paperwork that schools have to fill out. Uh, but you said federal paperwork. Yep, yeah, federal or state paperwork. I just think the federal stuff is typically more complicated <laughs> than, the, than the state stuff. Mm. Um, but we help with all of those things, and I specifically work on the Universal School Meals Campaign, uh, which is our campaign to get a law passed to make sure that Every student in every school across Vermont has access to breakfast and lunch every day at no cost to them or their families. Now, uh, being affected, I've grown up in New York. Um, you know, school food has changed. Uh, you know, you would get a tray, um, you would get a milk, you would get a hamburger, you would get something that's not nutritious. Can you expel the myths and legends around school food and why should it be more nutritious and how has it changed over the years? Yeah, so school meals, um, school meals have come a very long way in the, mm -hmm. in, in the past couple of years. 
um, about, oh God, I want to say it was about 10 years ago now, the federal government passed a law that raised the nutrition standards in mm -hmm. school. So in order to get money from the federal government, you have to provide a certain level of nutrition in school. Does it go, I apologize, does it no, go according to income? No, not, not the uh, nutrition standards. The okay. nutrition standards in every school across America, whether you're in a wealthy area like San Francisco or a less wealthy area, um, the nutrition standards are the same for all school meals, and um, the federal government helps support that. Mm -hmm. In Vermont specifically, last year, Hunger Free Vermont, along with um, Vermont Feed and the Vermont Food Bank and a bunch of our other amazing partners, helped get a law passed uh, that was a local purchasing food incentive. So in other words, schools in Vermont will get extra money from the state if they buy a certain amount of their food from local farms. So that's mm -hmm. local fruits and vegetables from gardens and orchards, uh, local meat and local milk uh, from you know cow farms, dairy farms all across the state. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, did you want to start asking questions? Take your time. Okay. If a child has an um, allergy to certain foods, but the school provides uh, that, that lunch for that for students? Yep, yep. Students, um, schools have to um, make accommodations uh, for students with allergies and things. And in certain school districts, not all of them yet, but in some school districts, Students are even provided with vegetarian alternatives. Like if a child is also kosher. Or yep, yep, that kind ex of thing. exactly. And so, um, you know, if there are chicken patties one day for lunch, there will be a vegetarian alternative, a vegan, a kosher alternative to that meal mm -hmm. um, in most schools. And again, this isn't every school, um, but in most schools, you will have okay, some. Okay, really now uh, looking at your website. We, I noticed uh, uh, some really great things here. It says, uh, and on the top, uh, you know, when you go uh, to the website, uh, which is www.hungerfreevt.org. Uh, um, now, can you kind of go uh, empowerment, dignity, equality, justice? So break down your organization in that, like, it, as though if it was a plate, okay? Because the plate has uh, several sections. You, you know, your meat, your dairy. So explain it in that way. Break down your organization and how you, you know, with equality, dignity, empowerment, and, and how your organization is broken down. Yeah, so Hunger Free Vermont is, um, Take your time. we believe that there is, fundamentally, we believe that there is enough food and there are enough resources mm -hmm. uh, that everybody should be able to have access to good quality, high nutritious food. Um, mm -hmm. And we think that having access to that good food is just central to someone's dignity. If you're not having access to good nutritious food, uh, it's harder for you to have that in yourself. It's, with it's malnutrition a, and exactly, all of that other thing. Exactly, yeah. and uh, you know, with empowerment, being able to eat well, having access to that good food, you know, it just makes your body healthier. It makes your mind healthier. It's, yeah. You can but learn this, better. This is, this is junk food. You know, junk food's not healthy. She well, says that, that junk food is not healthy for a lot of kids, and yep. a lot of schools also, you know, they give the, the chips and everything else on, on a tray, but that is not, no, no, that no. is not nutrition. You right. You have to give more, 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 like, more, more healthier snacks. Yep. Yeah. And that's, exact, and that's exactly one of those changes that's happened over the past few years. Um, you know, I was talking to one food school school food service person mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about how they served as a snack one day green peppers mm -hmm. yeah and um, the student had never had green peppers before they had never had it at home before so they had those green pepper snacks in school and then they went home and told their parents oh my god I love green peppers I tried them at school today they're delicious won't you buy them for me uh, and now that student brings those fresh green peppers with them to school as their own snack yeah. Uh, and that's all thanks to the school meal that they got. Um, well, that's good, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. And that's and that's one of those things that universal school meals, if all schools were be able to have access to that kind of money, uh, we know that in schools with universal school meals, the meals get healthier. Mm -hmm. Why did it take so long? I hope you don't mind me asking. Oh, no. Why did it take so long for changes, to, not just Vermont, but all around? Okay. Why did yeah. it take so long to get uh, uh, people to realize about nutrition in school? That's a that's a great question. I'm that sorry I, to, to kind of. Yeah. No. No. That's it's your a great, opinion. Go that's ahead. a great question, and it's one that I agree. <laughs> I don't know why it took so long for folks to figure this out. Um, but I'm excited, you know, we have our bill for universal school meals in the State House uh, just passed out of committee yesterday, nine to two, bipartisan vote. What does um, that mean in this case, bipartisan? Uh, both Democrats and Republicans, nine to two, voted for this. Um, and so I think folks are starting to realize more and more as time goes on that, because, you know, we've had universal school meals for the past two years all over the country as part of the federal government's COVID response. Uh, they said schools are dealing with so much and families are going through a hard time, so let's just give kids breakfast and lunch every day for two years. We've including, shown that we can do in, I'm sorry, including no, snack. so it's breakfast and lunch, yep. but then including also if they want a snack to take home or extra food, that kind of issue. Yep. That the, uh, Everything beyond breakfast and lunch is up to the schools. Um, and certain schools, you know, have like backpack programs where they just have quick backpacks that kids can grab that are filled with snacks and stuff. A lot of schools will have um, like grab and go baskets where if kids are hungry, they can just grab an apple and they don't have to like. Or pay grab for a it. sandwich if they don't want to. Yep, whatever, yep, whatever it is. Speaking um, about uh, sandwiches, there's been some cases across. And this goes according, you know, to your agency here. Um, there's been some cases across the country where schools charge students, or they they have a bill yep. that they have to pay, um, you know, a uh, dollar, two dollar, you know, whatever. But then, if a child, I saw some cases where uh, uh, <clears throat> if a child has a bill that's due to the school. The, child, the school would take the food away yep. and give the child a sandwich or something, or nothing at all. Yep. Why um, is, I hope it's not getting too hard for you, but why is, why is that, and um, why do the, um, the schools throw the food away? That's, first of all, that's wasting. That's, you know, not giving the kids nutrition. And it's embarrassing the child yep. if they cannot afford a meal. They still have to eat. Absolutely. And then if some, in some cases, parents pack their child the meal and the school tells the student, I'm sorry, you have to throw that away. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with you completely. And that is exactly. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Oh, no, you're now. not. No, I, I'll talk about this stuff all day. Um, that's exactly what we're trying to do away with by passing this law for universal school meals. Uh, we never again in Vermont will any child ever be told no, they can't have food when they're in school if we pass this bill. Um, there will be no more sc school um, debts. There will be no more money in the cafeterias. There will be no more, um, well, did, you, did your mom remember to put money in your account today, yes or no? And if the answer is no, you get no food. Uh, everyone will be just be, every student will be able Why to walk into that, the cafeteria. Why is that, 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 they, that they had to charge in the first place? So the way the system has always been set up, and the system was first put in place in the 1940s. Ooh, that during, wrong. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it was, <laughs> funny enough, the reason that we have uh, school meal programs at all is because there was so much malnutrition in mm. schools in the 1940s uh, that the army could not recruit students out of high school because they were too malnourished. So the response wow. to that 
Malnourished means what? Can you give a, they, they weren't a, layman, getting enough a layman's, food. can you give a definition? Yeah, they just, they weren't getting enough food. They, they did not weigh enough, they didn't have enough muscle. Um, they weren't getting enough food and nutrition during the day uh, to be able to get them into the armed services to fight in World War II. So the federal government's response was to implement school meal programs, wherein the federal government would pay some money and the families would pay some money uh, to get a school meal. So if a school meal right now costs three dollars, um, the federal government will, each meal costs three dollars for the school to prepare. Each plate is three dollars. The federal government will give them two dollars and then they have to charge the family one dollar. Uh, but from what meal. I was also told, it, because it's like a, some schools only are given a certain like a small budget, yep. like a dollar fifty or uh, seventy five. Let's say, layman's terms, seventy five cents to a dollar per child. Yep. That is not enough, right? To no. feed a child. Yep. A uh, uh, example that like, there's. You can't let a child go hungry. You know. Yeah, there's been um there some some people. Live on minimum wage. Well, I mean, years mm -hmm. ago, minimum wage used to be what seven, eight dollars, nine dollars, right? And you have to try to feed your your child on that budget, or you you and your child on that budget. And if you if you're a single mother, yep. Um, some people get they have a federal program called WIC, yep. where they get their uh their, their um, bread, their juice, their whatever. Uh, Food to feed that baby yep. and the and the and the mother, but um, can you piggyback off that? Like f federal programs only get a, a, a small smidgen to feed. Yep. We need more, and Absolutely. this is why your program yep. exists. Absolutely, and so right. So two things there. One is what this law does is it the schools will get money from the state government as well as the federal government. So it's both Washington, D.C. and... And Montpelier. Um, and that will cover all of the costs so that families don't have to pay anything for their school meals. And right now, school meals cost, on average, $900 per student per year. So if you have two kids and you're giving... like a lot either. No. Um, well, it is like like you just said. When you're working on minimum wage, nine hundred dollars can go a very long way. Yeah. So yeah. if you have two kids, you make too much money to qualify for the free programs, but you don't make nearly enough, you know, to live a good life. You're and you have two kids. You're now spending nine hundred eighteen hundred dollars a year just to feed your kids in school. Mm -hmm. So what Universal School Meals does is it not only makes it more affordable for schools to do it, it also saves those parents $900 per year per child. So now they yeah. have more money to spend on food at home, and their kids are now getting two meals a day in school. And what if, uh, um, does your organization, like if somebody needs food stamps or any other food program, do you help with the applications? Do you Absolutely, yep. If you, um, you know, if, if, if you are not sure if you qualify for a certain program, or if you um, get the application for it and you look at it and you go, oh, this is complicated, I have no idea how to figure this out, you can call us at Hunger Free Vermont, send us an email, whatever it is, um, and we can help you fill out that paperwork, we can help you get connected to services. Um, you know, the more we talk to you and the more we find out, you might say, oh, well, I don't qualify for this and this program, so I guess I can't do it. We might know no, you don't qualify for this program, but this program over here you do qualify for, and we'd be happy to help fill out that paperwork for you. Mm -hmm. um, and we do the same. We do the same thing with schools. If schools want to get a grant, for example, or get more money um, from the federal government and have for, to fill out a whole bunch of for food and yeah, for food or any kind of assistance that schools need um, in their yeah. nutrition programs, we're there to help out. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead. One more question. Take your time. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've been seeing a new kid, you know, from the What? Say again? Repeat that? I've been seeing a new kid, you know, from the 
What? Oh, oh, okay. So my wife's question is, what if a child sits down to lunch mm -hmm. and there is something that they don't like on that tray? Um, there's a lot of food waste. Does your organization, how do you deal with the food waste? Is there a way to make lunches more, more nutritious so, because, you know, Kids, when they see some kids, when they see a healthy, nutritious thing, oh, I don't like tofu. Oh, I don't like, <laughs> I, I don't like falafel. You yeah. know, I happen to love this stuff. But yep. some people, yeah. Uh, what do you do in that case? So, um, so to start, you know, most schools nowadays have multiple options mm -hmm. on a school day. So most schools will have at least a sandwich station where a kid can ask. You know, I'd like tuna, I'd like turkey and cheese, whatever it is. They can ask for those things, um, as well as whatever specialty lunch has been, like whatever hot lunch. So there's a sandwich line, and in, this is, again, this isn't everywhere, but this is most schools. Mm -hmm. They'll have a sandwich area and then a hot lunch area. So there are some more options there for the kids. Um, or like if it's a holiday coming up, they'll have like a special. Yeah, I actually saw... Um, the Milton School District for Valentine's Day had a whole Valentine's Day themed menu um, where, you know, they had like little peppermint stick bars um, and they had chicken that was uh, in the shape of a heart. It was very cute. Um, so, yep, special holiday meals, you know, corned beef and cabbage for St. Patrick's Day, that type of deal. Love this stuff. Um, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> who doesn't? Um, and, you know, food, wa food waste is, you know, a problem Yeah, how do, you, how do you deal with the food waste? Because, you know, years ago, uh, when, it was, when it was the Board of Education in New York, because it changed to Department of Ed, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars are thrown in the trash. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and that's like, you know, food waste is a national problem, it's, and it's not just in schools. Um, you know, grocery stores. Mm. Uh, grocery stores, there's a ton of waste in grocery stores because uh, the federal government says you can't, you know, do X, Y, Z. And then I'm, I'm going to bring restaurants up for a minute. In a restaurant, by law, you are not allowed to serve yesterday's leftovers. Right. You have to either donate it to a church or some other organization, uh, uh, a food bank, or something like if it's a big amount, because mm -hmm. you you can't just you know you 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 have to you throwing it in the garbage doesn't. I mean, if it's like one cookie, it's one cookie. But right. I'm talking about a whole tray of food. Yeah, you're wasting, you know, stuff. Yeah, and it becomes an issue. Yep. No, absolutely. And and so you know that's what's well, one more thing. Hunger Free Vermont is working on. Uh, but I you know like I said, it's just that's that's not a schools problem that's a national I'm, I'm sorry to bring waste. up national oh no not at all not at all um so um it no um when you say like okay you say same opportunity and you want people to thrive and so um can you go through that a little bit more? Is there anything that we really didn't mention that yeah. should be mentioned? Yeah, I think that you know, giving folks the opportunity to thrive and giving everyone access to the same things is important because you know we were talking earlier about New York and how in some communities you know it's there aren't grocery stores in a lot. Yeah, some business. places. Yeah. Some place there just are not healthy options available to. Uh, there, is there always a healthy option in Vermont? In most, in most cases, yes, uh, but that also gets back to affordability. We know that healthier foods are more expensive mm. than sugary snacks, salty snacks. So, like, you know, just healthy juices are more expensive than soda. So for Soy a family, for exactly. example, is so like for, six bucks a cart. Yep, so if for a family that's struggling financially, because we know folks aren't making enough money, 
uh, for someone who's struggling financially, they have to make the choice. Do they buy less of a healthier food or more of a food that's cheaper but not as nutritious? And you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that, like I said earlier, that having that access to healthy, nutritious food is just so important and affects so many different aspects of people's lives that it should not matter where you live or how much money you have, whether you are a super rich person who lives in the middle of a big shiny city or you're someone who's not doing as well financially living in a more rural area, they should all have access to the same healthy, nutritious food, regardless of their income, regardless of where they live. Now, how, how has COVID impacted does COVID how has COVID impacted your organization or impacted school food as a whole? Go yep. ahead. So, so like I said earlier, because of COVID, all students in all schools across the country have had free breakfast and lunch. And this is one of the silver linings of COVID is that what we're trying to do is to keep that going even after the pandemic. We've shown that we can provide breakfast and lunch to every student there at every school. It is possible. We've been doing it for two years. So now we have to keep it up. Mm -hmm. um, but just bro more broadly with COVID, yeah, yeah. one in four at some point between now and when the pandemic started, one in three Vermonters have been food insecure. Oh. One in three people. Food insecure. Food. Yes, being not able to, um, being worried about being able to get food, not having enough money to get food. One in three people in Vermont have experienced that over the course of the past two years. And that's, a, that's huge. That's a huge number of people. Um, and that's so, a number that should be erased. I mean, food insecurity. Exactly. It's exactly. a big problem. Yep, yep. So, um, so it, it's been huge for Hunger Free Vermont and ourselves, the staff, um, and all of our community partners have worked so hard over the past couple Do of years. Do pantries, food pantries, help your organization at all? Um, I'd say I, I'd say we help them more than they help us, and I don't how, mean how that. So? In the, how so? Well, and what I mean by if, that if is... If we can mention that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what I mean is we help... I don't mean that in a sarcastic way. What I mean to say is that they're the ones who are on the ground giving out the food every day. They're the ones who are in their communities talking to folks, getting them the food that they need. Um, so we want to do everything we can to support the food pantries, to support um, the food shelves, to, Vermont, to support the Vermont Food Bank. Um, we work very closely with all of them, um, especially over the course of the last two years. So someone... You know, someone in St. Johnsbury calls up and says, oh, I have all of these vegetables that are going to go to waste. What do I do with them? Well, we had a conversation yesterday with somebody in Newport who needs vegetables. So let's get those two people connected and get that food up to Newport. Um, so we do things like that all the time. And we have, um, we have what are called hunger councils, which are pretty much just groups of organizations and people in Washington County, the Northeast Kingdom, Chittenden County, wherever you are. Um, and that's a combination of folks who work at Hunger Free Vermont, who work for the state, who work at food shelves and food pantries, um, all talking to one another and coordinating how to best get resources out to different communities. Okay, go ahead. You want to ask some more questions? We have some time. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying that if, if families are, you know, kids are, you know, uh, you know, the kids malnourished, that's not good, right? What? Repeat the, repeat the question. The question is, how many kids are malnourished? Oh, there's malnourishment. Um, is that, well, that's a huge, huge problem because we're talking about globally, but locally, um, is malnourishment a big issue, or does that go back to food insecurity or both? I, it's tied to food insecurity. Um, with kids, again, over the past two years, families with kids have been five times more likely to be food insecure than those who don't have kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and we know that there are kids who are just not getting access to the food that they need. And universal school meals is a key piece of that 
because you know we can only control so much of what happens in people's personal lives. But with universal school meals, we know that kids are getting at least two meals every day while they're in school. If we'll do the best we can to support families and we advocate for policy changes that will help support mm -hmm. families. What what are the policy changes are oh, are, are goodness. going through? Um, well, right now we're working, you know, very very much on the universal school meals bill in the legislature. That's our big push right now. Um, but you know, Hunger Free Vermont was uh, supportive of the paid family leave bill from a couple of years ago. Supportive of raising the minimum wage, things like that. Things that get um, that help families access more food. Food, yeah. Now, have schools? Well, this goes back to changes. Processed food. Okay, crackers, chips, those things mm -hmm. that are like unnutritious or that kids like, oh, I'd rather have a chocolate bar instead of a sandwich, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, do you, are schools also through Hunger Free Vermont, like do maybe, we do a cooking class with a, with a school to teach kids like how to make certain things at home so they're not, going hungry or teaching them how to cook or independent skill skills in the kitchen that kind of thing yeah we'd um tr we don't do as much of that kind of work um but we do it's again one of those things where we see our role very much as connecting people so we know that there are already folks doing that kind of work so if a school came to us and said that they wanted to do those kind of things a we would help yes we would help connect them with all right, so what do you need to do that? Do you need, um, maybe a school wants to do a cooking class, but they don't have any space. They don't have like a, a good place for a small kitchen for all the kids. We can help them write applications to the state government to say, hey, help us pay for this kitchen space, those types of things. Or someone that has kitchen space to yeah, or, yes, or we might say, oh, we know the, that the food pantry at the church over here 10 minutes from your school, they have a kitchen space, so let's get you guys connected and talking, and maybe we can work out like an after-school program where the kids go right to that church, to hell, well, church is a bad example, but where they go right to that kitchen area and start doing those types of things, so yeah. Um, what is the misconceptions around um, nutrition and School nutrition and that kind of stuff. So I think that um, I think that, that people there don't are, know about, or people are insecure about. Or. I think there's two big things. I think one misconception is that we already have school meal programs, and kids are already, and the, the kids who are most in need are getting fed. And that's just not true because you talked earlier about the kid being embarrassed that the account that the, their parents owe the school money, for example. Um, and does that still go on, though? Without lot? universal school meals, yes. So it hasn't been happening the past two years because every kid can just walk into the cafeteria, get the meal, and walk out, no questions asked. And so what this law does is it makes that permanent. It extends it another year so that we don't have those kind of situations where a kid is embarrassed or feels like they can't have access to the same thing their kids have. So one misconception is that Basically, the misconception is that the old way of doing the school lunch programs was working fine. The kids who were most in need were getting the food they needed, and everyone else can afford to pay for it. And we know that that's just not true. Um, and I think another big misconception about hunger and nutrition is um, we hear a lot about like personal choice when it comes to hunger and nutrition. Like, well, why don't they just choose to buy healthier food? Why don't they just choose blah, blah, blah? What we talked about earlier in some neighborhoods, there are not supermarkets. And if mm. you don't have a car, what are you going to do? So it's not, um, it's not just personal choice that impacts nutrition. It's, it's about the systems that are in place and if they have access to that food in the first place. And like we said earlier, even if there is a neighborhood, uh, even if there is a grocery store in that neighborhood, even if they do have a car and they can drive to the grocery store, once they get to the grocery store, the healthier food is still more expensive than the less healthy food. And so if you're you know, living paycheck to paycheck, if you're mm. on a budget, you might not be able to afford that healthier food. Yeah. Um, and then you have to make the choice, well, do I pay the rent or do I buy some healthier food? And no one should be put into that position. Um, 
So those are, I think, two big misconceptions. Okay. Um, go ahead. Last question before we end. Any more questions? Arlene? Oh, we lost. Ooh. No, lost we her. We lost her. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, uh, thank you again. Yeah, thank um, you. Uh, uh, Say your last name again, please. It's Teddy Wazizak. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wazizak, for joining us from Hungry uh, Free, uh, from Hungry Free VT and um, Hungry Free Vermont because, uh, you know, it's important for um, better nutrition. For more information on Hungry Free Vermont, we, uh, you can go to www.hungryfreevt. Uh, Dot org. That website again is www.hungerfreevt.org. And is there a number that people can contact you at or just a website? Oh, yeah. you can just go onto the website. All my contact information is right on the website. Okay. So again, www.hungerfreevt.org. Um, um, this puts an end to this edition of Able to On Air. Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, the Association for the Blind of Vermont, and um, Division for the Blind of Vermont, and many, many, many others for uh, taking the time to support Able Dead On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Den On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.